Hi, people. How's everybody doing? Beautiful Monday. Yes. Yes. Hope y'all doing well, even though gas is going up. Yeah, that's very true. What is it at now? Uh, uh, $4, I think. I think it was four dollars, mm. but I know um, if it draws up to like five, six dollars, uh, I may be only coming out the house a couple That's times a week, pulling out my uh, bicycle, <laughs> right? Walking places and stuff. <laughs> yeah, you see, California, the gas is almost up to six dollars. Yeah, That's insane. Yeah, I'm like, we're gonna be uh. We're going to be staying home for a little while. <laughs> yeah, I guess yeah. I, don't, I don't understand why fully it's happening yet, though. Um, I, part, part of me, I think, is the whole Ukraine-Russia thing, since we get so much of our, uh, our uh, gas from over there. Yeah. That's, that's one part. The other part, I think, is um, they haven't opened up the, the oil reserves here in the United States mm -hmm. yet, I think. The other part is the gas companies know that we need gas and, and so, fear yeah. fear allows them to increase prices. <laughs> that's, that's really, I think, the whole, the whole inflation thing is not just government. It's also the businesses trying to milk as much money as they can. Yeah, they know they know it works. Yeah, they know, they know. I mean, come on, they're purposely putting stuff higher. They're having record profits with you know higher prices, which tells you they're really not as out as much stuff as they say they are. Mm -hmm. like, come on, y'all. But either way, we believe God provides. Praise the Lord. Shana, no, no. So I'm gonna be like, yeah, I might stay home a little bit in some days. <laughs> <laughs> work, work from home. Yeah, well, I, I guess people who have a electric cars now are happy they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm uh, I'm glad I got. I don't do premium. Mm -hmm. Regular. Praise God. <laughs> hey, morning, y'all. What's up? Afternoon, everybody. Hey, Bell. Hey, Keefe. What's up, Squeak? How you doing? If I hope that's the right, so it's the key. Um, that's 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 your version of tongues. <laughs> <laughs> I practice uh, Isha Kana Labosa too. You uh, you practice that too. <laughs> <laughs> that was very fluent too. You said the very the diction was good. You must have practiced really good. <laughs> oh, what's up, y'all? How you from Pakistan? What's going on? Um. Please do us a favor and share if you're watching for the first time. Shout us out. Hey, Keisha, let us know who you are, where you're watching from. We'd love to hear from you all. Um, if you're the first time, write VIP mm -hmm. and, um, in the comments and shout us out and rap to us. We're getting ready to get started. Just welcoming everybody in. Um, as you know, Maya and I just started talking about random stuff up front. Yeah, his fault. <laughs> well, I have a version of ADD, but you do sometimes too, though. <laughs> You do sometimes too, um, even though your brain's probably a little more focused than mine at times. <laughs> it's just misorganization. Mis I mean, I feel like I'm just organized as most people are organized. Hey, Anjanette. For the most well, no, part. I'm, <clears throat> I'm organized with some things. I'm very anal about um, how stuff's set up. Mm -hmm. It's got to be the exact angles, the right look. Even if it's like a centimeter off, I got to tilt mm -hmm. it back just to, I'm anal with those things. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hey, Jelaine, how you doing? <laughs> but uh, we hope you are well. Please again, share. It is the uh, first Monday in March. Yeah. And this year, excuse me, y'all. I feel like it's flying by already. It's going. Um, January felt like a whole year. It felt like forever to get out of. Um, maybe because Omicron was was growing so much in January. Is that what it is? I sense. think it was because it really busted out and it felt real long. 
yeah. um, uh, during that time because so many people were, you know, getting on me crying and now everybody is trying to go back to normal. That's one thing. Here's, here's my thing on this. We have to open up eventually. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about the world, not just here at church. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about just in general. And I got that. Um, the, the, the thing is, let's see how this next wave comes through. Hey, Robin, if the next wave is not as potent as Omicron, I think that's our clue that, you know, we should open up. Not Omicron was less, so now we're out of it. We don't know that yet. Yeah. You know, viruses take time to show how if their strains are lessening. And eventually it's going to lessen. It happens. Um, <laughs> eventually it will lessen. <clears throat> but I think we need to kind of la- wait to see how this thing is going to work out. Because I think China is going through another big surge. I don't know are if it's they? Omicron. Yeah, but I, I, it might be Omicron finally hitting them. It may not be. I'm not sure. Hmm. I didn't. I saw it this morning, but I was working with the kids. So I didn't get a chance to really yeah. read it, read it. No, it, it's crazy seeing everyone who is out walking without the mask and, you know, just doing things as normal. And mm-hmm. I, I don't know, maybe it's just me. I'm a little bit more slow to things. You know, I'm, I'm going to be wearing my mask for a long time you before tell her? things get back to whatever normal is. But, yeah. I, I'd rather well, wait and see. <laughs> if, if the doctor's offices are still requiring people to wear a mask, mm-hmm. and not even just a regular, I mean, everyone, um, I think that says something. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it, it, you can't, you can, and some people, I saw, I went to the doctor once and they were mad. Well, I got to wear a mask in here. We don't have mask mandates. Well, it's a doctor's office. Like, I haven't had to wear one in a while. Like, are you at, Wear your mask. It's not that deep. Yeah. But, you know, to me, if if you got something going for you, I think you'd be okay wearing a mask. It's 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 really not that big of a deal. It's not. Just put it on and wear it. Call it a day. (laughs) And studies have shown if everybody wears a mask, it it helps. Some people say the masks don't work. That's because if you got, if you're in a room and 15 people are in there, 12 of them aren't wearing a mask and three are, the likelihood is going to it is different, yeah. but if all fifteen are wearing a mask, it lessens the odds. It just is what it is. It's just. And I think the fact that you know, just like the common flu and co- and colds aren't spreading as much <laughs> means that it does work. It's doing something. Yeah, I haven't had a cold since 2019. Mm-hmm. Literally since 2019. Mm-hmm. Ever since we started wearing masks in March of 2020. I have not had a cold since. Mm-hmm. I've had to blow my nose a few times, but it's mm-hmm. been very rare. I haven't had a cold, haven't had the flu, none yeah. of that stuff. Just regular allergy stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, since we've been wearing masks everywhere. And I'm like, I, after it's over, I still might wear it out. Cause <laughs> I, it's, it, literally, I you know, just mm-hmm. allergy stuff and that's it. So... Yeah, and to like, I know you guys talked about this one on point with um, the governor down in Florida. Making those kids take their mask off. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the, I saw, did you see the mom? When she, um, she said, no, I can just picture my mom. <laughs> <laughs> it would be so bad. Yo. If, if I yo. was one of those kids. Yeah, I, and one of them, I think, kept it on. His mom after was like, he, he does. He was wrong for, for saying him. that. I told my son, you keep your mask on. <laughs> Boy, you better listen to your mama. Mm-hmm. You ain't going home with that governor. <laughs> That's it, true. Yeah. Mask and all, I think, and the consistent washing your hands all the time. Yeah. You know, you come in right into the house. First thing you do is wash your hands. You know what's funny, though? It may, Now that COVID has opened up so much, it's really made me think, do I ever want to eat at a buffet again? I mean, literally, when you think about it, I thought about Never. all those times. <laughs> I thought about all those times where there were buffets, right? Yeah. And people were just talking over the food mm-hmm. while they're getting, you know, you're talking, putting stuff on the food. I'm like, how much getting stuff there, out and putting stuff back? How much spit is going into this food? And you're sitting there and we're just like not even mm-hmm. thinking about it. Just <laughs> just just you know, yeah. just 
No, it just really just made me like reevaluate things. Like even like if I go to the Wawa and pick up a uh, soda, which I don't do too much anymore. Thank you. Praise God. Thank you. Water, <laughs> water, water. Did you see my water bottle that I brought with me today? No, where? It's over there by my stuff. Oh, you didn't drink it since we got here. Okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> where's Robin's comment? I'm going to put like, that up. I'm like, we have, we've been here for over an hour. I'm like. <laughs> um, but it, what was I? Oh, like even getting things out of the Wawa and how the cashiers like touch the top of your water bottles or sodas. Like. Where you, where you drink from, like, I'm wiping I'm... everything down mm-hmm. when I bring things home. This may be anal of mine, anal, anal of me, mm-hmm. but honestly, I don't drink out of them. Like, no? if I get a cup of coffee or something for Wawa, uh-huh. I take it home, I pour it into, or from here, I pour it into an actual glass cup. Mm-hmm. I don't even drink out of it. Yeah. I don't do it. I don't even drink out of it. Um, If I get a bottle of water somewhere, I pour it into, mm-hmm. I don't. I don't do it. It's just, mm-hmm. it, it just even like when I bring food home from like if I'm Chipotle yeah. or something, I pour it into a bowl, throw the thing out, wash my hands, and then eat mm-hmm. the food. It's, mm-hmm. I know I'm a little OCD. No, like but that. I mean I'm not quite like that, but I am more of that mm-hmm. mindset now. Mm-hmm. And like even just thinking like, how many times have you been out going to fast food, handing your cash, which is already dirty, and then you just eat without like. Washing your hands. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah, gross. Touching, yeah, literally. What were we doing? Touching all that stuff and just yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I just I we think think things are changing. Like, mm-hmm. and, like you go out to eat and the utensils are sitting there on the table and people nope. are just walking around I talking. Hate when they just put things in the bag, like don't put those things on top of my food. <laughs> you, you know, it's crazy. This is how crazy we are, right? Um. Uh, I know people that will go to a restaurant, right? And they're like, "Oh, I'm not drinking from this cup because people's lips are on this cup." Let me. They they use a straw, but I'm like, mm. "But you just ate from a fork that people had on their mouth too." Like, like very true. Be consistent. <laughs> <laughs> like it's it's weird. Like, but I I I think that you know. Maybe it's a good topic to talk about. People, we can get so frustrated with not being able to do stuff that we want to do that we lose our common sense. Mm-hmm. You know, you can be so tired of something, you can lose your common sense. And that works not just with COVID, just all over the place. Yeah, People are just sick of COVID. They're like, whatever, I'm going to do me, live whatever life, and not even think about, you know, mm-hmm. what's what, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and don't And don't consider how our emotions play a role in removing our common sense. Yeah. If I could say it like that. Mm-hmm. No, we don't allow ourselves the time to actually think and process through the emotions. <laughs> yeah. To think logically. Yeah. Yep. And I mean, because we do stuff, we, we excuse one thing, like the, like the, the, the eat, drink from glass, but, won't drink from the glass, but we'll eat with a fork that was used before. We'll, we don't we don't think about mm-hmm. which actually the fork has not been in somebody's whole entire mouth mm-hmm. versus the cup. <laughs> you don't know what side they drunk from. But here we don't uh-huh. think we don't never we never equate the two together. <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't, I'm not saying we should avoid everything. Um, I'm just thinking. I'm just talking about the contradictory thought process that we have. You know, whether you want to drink from that or you just, I don't care. I'm not, that's not the whole premise of it. Yeah. It's just, you know. Do you feel though that some people go against the green just to go against the green? Oh, of course. Yeah. I don't care. I'm a dude me. I ain't scared yeah. of nothing. I'm okay. And hey, wait, what are you, what are you trying to prove? <laughs> it's like for, for what? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but, but <laughs> well, I don't know how we got in this conversation. <laughs> it, it was your fault. <laughs> <laughs> But but it just goes to show how most people don't think through something. Mm-hmm. A lot of it's based off emotion and how we feel, mm-hmm. even if it doesn't make sense when you bring it up. Well, I mean, we had that that YOLO. You only live once. You might as well just do it mentality. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Maybe hopefully, I'm hoping it's not just a millennial thing where we're not necessarily no. processing through things. <laughs> no, no. I mean, it just it's. 
COVID is, you know, the, the extremity of it with Omicron is not as bad as before, which is good. Thank mm -hmm. God. And, you know, it is it ho hopefully it's a clue. I didn't say it is. Hopefully it is a clue that it's starting to wane. The severity is starting to wane. But we won't know that for a couple of months, to be honest with you, mm -hmm. um, because if a new strain comes out. But I still think we can do this thing right, open up right, and have some common sense in the process. You know, rather than just, all right, y'all, it's over, and just boom. Everything's open. I'm not, I'm not even talking about living in fear. You know, I'm talking about using common sense. Mm -hmm. You know, I was at the store last night. I had my mask on, of course. Some people didn't. Some people did. I was in, got what I needed, went right on out. Yep. Um, but you, having a mask on is not living in fear. Some, it's just To me, it's just common sense. It's just, yeah. even in China. But if we lived in Asian countries, like Japan they, and all those they things. They were masked for a long time. Yeah. Because their whole thing is if I have a cold, you know, let me cover up so other people can't get sick. But Americans aren't used to thinking of other people. Mm -hmm. We think about ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's what and I want. It's what I want. Yeah. And in Asian countries, they think about the other. So if I know I got a cold, why am I going to go outside and just breathe all my air on everybody? Mm -hmm. Put a mask on so I can protect other people from my cold. We don't think like that. Mm -hmm. We're like, just deal with it. <laughs> if I get you sick, oh well, you be all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a shame. Yeah, and what's yes. sad? People bring it to Christianity too, because mm -hmm. now it's all about what's comfortable for me, but not what's best for everybody else. Right. You know, um, I think how can I say this without getting too much trouble? I can see what people are saying, but I think. A lot of people take it too far when people say your own relationship with Jesus. What does that mean? That means your own personal relationship with Jesus outside of everybody else. But doesn't it also say that to love God is to love others? So I don't understand how that works. Exactly. <laughs> Ex you just proved my point. Exactly. Yeah. You can't have salvation absent of the community of faith. It's just, it's impossible. Mm -hmm. All I need is, is me and God and we cool. Really? You think so? Show me that in scripture. <laughs> you know, all I need is Jesus. That's it. You know, um, me and my own relationship with Jesus. Show me that in scripture. Where is that? Mm. It's not in there. So I, I think we need to start considering other people and stop because it's inconvenient for us. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be inconvenient. So we just kind of let people deal with whatever because we goes, don't want to be inconvenienced. That's just counter everything of what Christianity is. You know, you made a sacrifice. You have to sacrifice yourself sometimes for others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's what the Bible calls us to do, to sacrifice for others, to think about others before we think about ourselves, mm -hmm. to consider others. He's not saying don't think about yourself. He's saying consider others, mm -hmm. you know, don't just discard them because it's something you don't feel like doing. Because mm. how can I say this? Not, not to get too deep into this, but reducing the cross to, to simply Jesus dying for our sins is not good. Yeah. Yes, we already people, why Jesus died on the cross? All for our sins. Yes, that's mm -hmm. true. But I can give you four or five to ten reasons why else. He died for our sins. One of those was to reconcile us back to each other. Yeah. Which means the cross of Christ was meant to bring people back together. But if we're not connecting, mm -hmm. then we're not really fulfilling the full work of the cross. So I can't mm -hmm. say I believe in Jesus. He died for my sins and treat you like trash at the same time. It's not how this works. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. It's not how this works. Mm -hmm. that, that's always been my thing about as a whole, you know, celebrating the Easter holiday. And something mm -hmm. I appreciate about Bethany is that it goes past just, like you said, Jesus died for a sins, right? And even thinking, about, okay, afterwards, what, what were we called to do? Mm -hmm. You know? So, yeah. yeah. It, there's, a, there's a lot more to it that I think some people focus on. Yeah. 
Yeah, love God, love your neighbor are the two most, the whole book is reduced down to that. Mm -hmm. Love God, love you. I was reading something in Leviticus where um, he was talking about, you know, save some of your crop for the poor that come by. Don't pick all of it up. Leave some for others because he was trying to teach them to think of others even when you're prospering. Mm -hmm. You know, and the Bible's full of how we treat people and, you know, God not being pleased with how people are being treated. Mm -hmm. And in our lives, we have to have the love of God and use that love of God to be able to love others at the same time, mm -hmm. you know, it, in, in a way that's godly, mm -hmm. in a way that's right. Um, but Jesus never told you not to take something that was man-made. I mean, that was the case. The doctor would be on blood pressure medicine, and you're like, no, <laughs> your blood pressure shoots up. It's just, come on. <laughs> but anywho, maybe this, this is a good topic to talk about this month. Love God, love your neighbor. Love God, mm -hmm. love your neighbor. When the book of Ruth, she went to the fields. Why? Because according to the Jewish law, they had to leave some food on the edges so people that were poor could come by and pick up some food. Mm -hmm. Again, love God, honor God, and you honor God also by honoring your neighbor. By looking how I can benefit other people around me rather than just how God can benefit me. Yeah. Just it's just the reality of the situation. Mm -hmm. Um and, and it's all through scripture. All through scripture. From Ruth to the Levitical system to Jesus walking the earth. All of that. I think the problem is is that people have a um <sighs> Everybody has their own interpretation of what loving their neighbor looks like, which is the problem. Well, yeah, and I think, too, that for a lot of people, their definition of love is very self-centered. <laughs> it is. It is, okay, based on, how do, you, how do I say it? On what you get in return. So if I'm not getting something back, I'm not, that's not love. I don't show love to you. Like that sort of thing. It's transactional. Yes. Yeah. There's that word again. Yeah. I'm only doing this for you so I can get something from you. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people have a relationship with God like that. Mm -hmm. I'm only praying so I can get something. I'm only fasting so I can get something. I'm only in the word so I can get something. You know, I'm only doing praising you so I can get something. I'm only worshiping you to get something. Uh, rather than those things be tools for relationship. Mm -hmm. And then in turn, God starts to release. Those things aren't meant to be used just to get something from God. And then get mad when God doesn't do it. That's because you were using it for the wrong reasons. So God wants us, this would be a good topic to talk about this month. How we're supposed to love our neighbor. What does that look like? Mm -hmm. uh, which means we got to tackle some issues like racism and all that stuff yeah. like that. It just It's the reality of <clears throat> of of the situation mm -hmm. that I can't mistreat you and think God I can be okay with God. It's impossible. Right. It's impossible. It, you can it, those two completely contradict. Completely contradict. Mm -hmm. So there's got to be some self consideration mm -hmm. involved in every decision we make. So. You know, and for us, like I'll take us here. When y'all gonna open? Oh, 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 oh right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hope you sound like that. But we're thinking <laughs> about we're considering others before we open up. We want to open, trust me. Of course. But yeah, uh, we're just conscious, and like you said, we'll rather take our time before you know we make a decision rather than mm -hmm. make a decision too fast and then have the close. Yeah. You know, like, what if something happened? We open up quickly and there's a whole outbreak in our media ministry. We ain't got no service that Sunday. Right. <laughs> and then we all Everybody's, go to the church. All right. We all got to church anyway. Everybody's <laughs> sick. So we, we just have to, we have to think through. There's a lot, there's a lot to consider. Yeah. In it's, decision making. It's not, if it were just about matters of the heart, of course, we, we probably would have been in church a long time ago. But like you said, like, we have to consider everything and be logic about things you know and, and see these things through yeah yeah and just really 
consider. I mean, it, I, I, to, to us, I, I can't speak for everybody else. It's, it's none of my none of my business. It's not my responsibility. But I'm talking about for mm-hmm. us here mm-hmm. and the people that God put under this the auspices of this church. You know, that's how we choose to do it. Because I'm sure we're going to get a couple more. How come? You know, why we're we not open yet? That's the mm-hmm. answer. <laughs> right yeah, I mean, there. As a person who just goes to church, that I can respect that because that means that you care more about me enough to say no at, at this moment, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Just right now, you know, we love you, but let's slow down for a minute. You know, we'll, we'll get there. We will trust me. I want to get back in the community in church too. I really, really, really do. Uh, but we're taking our time. It's okay, Robin. <laughs> so, you know, that may be a good topic. We'll talk, we'll talk through that. Cause you know one thing maybe we can talk about next week gets on my nerves. I see people say it all the time. Uh we're one in Christ. So there is no racism. Cause God made us all equal. Well, how come people aren't treated equally? People I, literally people are saying this. Who says that? <laughs> Some of these conservative Christians that don't want to admit oh. racism is real. Hmm. You know, they're, they're just like, they're really, Jesus made us one, you know, in Christ through the cross, we're all together. Well, everybody's not treated the same way and love must be worked out. Mm-hmm. It's like a marriage. The wedding can make you one, but it takes years to work on what that oneness is like. Mm-hmm. It takes a long time to do that. So this whole thing, Jesus died for our sins to unite hmm. us all. We're all united in Christ. It's baloney as it relates to people's unwillingness to work it out and just say, in Christ, we're all one. But do you think they really just think that and aren't seeing? No, they know what they know. They're trying to convince themselves. They know. So like, okay. Um, they know. I think that. they know. I think they know. I went to a Christian school and I mm-hmm. think it was of that mindset, right? Mm-hmm. We're all one. Mm-hmm. But at least then when I was there almost 10 years ago, which is crazy. Why you cover your mouth when you said that? Because <laughs> I can't, I still can't believe it. Okay, I don't know why I get started on that. Uh, but like all the black people were, their dorms were, and they were all in one dorm. Mm-hmm. And it was the worst dorm because it was by the sewage. And it smelled. That was on purpose. They put it everybody. Had to be. Every I was really, me and one other person was the only black people on campus who weren't in those dorms. Really? Mm-hmm. So this was that all, just that, huh? that was a freshman freshman group was there or just all freshman all, group. Okay. I, how can I say this? There was one church that I remember going to as a kid. We mm-hmm. just went there. We, we were sent there a couple of times. Um, all uh, it's actually pretty close by here, too. I'll tell you after. Um, all, all <laughs> of, they had a big bus ministry thing that bring the kids in from Sunday school. All the black kids were downstairs, mm-hmm. all the white kids were upstairs. Mm-hmm. Um, and I gotta take this call, darn it. Um, I'll call them back. All the black kids were downstairs. <laughs> All the white, all the white kids were upstairs, and they kept us separate mm. because there's this overwhelming philosophy. We'll talk about this next week because I do gotta go. It's overwhelming philosophy that our job is just to get folks saved, mm. and that's it. Mm-hmm. Like the slave owner, let's make mm-hmm. sure the, save, the slaves are saved so they can go to heaven. Let's not change slavery though. Mm-hmm. And you still have that with some people. Let's get these savages saved, mm-hmm. but keep their condition the same. Hmm. And to me, any salvation that will lead somebody to heaven, but keep their condition the same is not the gospel. Hmm. So I think what you saw there was that our job is just to get you to Jesus. And that's it. That's what I'm realizing now. That's all it was. That's all yeah. it was. And let's go in here and be a savior, rescue these people. But. The reason why they're in what they're in is their fault. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a whole complexity tie into it. It's just it's it's. And it's, it makes my head hurt. <laughs> yeah, it's it's sickening too. To be honest with you, 
it really is. It, it is sickening. Um, how how they how they how some of them, and I've, I've been around this crowd for a long time. How they see things. Mm-hmm. It's like I want you to be saved, but I want you living in our community. I don't want you being friends with our kids. That's that's literally how some people are. Yeah. Don't get be close, but don't get that close. I don't get it. So that's why you say like we're all one, we're all equal. And of course, not everyone's like that, but mm-hmm. just certain uh, ones. I see things a little bit differently sometimes. Mm-hmm. Because it's still that you guys are separate, but then there because their view of equality is you guys are here, we're here, and that's how we what we call. Oh equal. yeah, this could be a whole <laughs> different conversation. Almost, it's almost like your presence is here, and we'll just tolerate it. Well. Yeah, and it's a tool because when those brochures or those pamphlets go out, everybody and their mama's on them. Yep, yep. I'm tell you, I I've been around that world for a while, and I've seen and talked to some people, and the stuff, and the them to them is completely normal. Um, because I was thinking about something last night when people say that there is no privilege, mm-hmm. and I say the difference is this. Privilege doesn't mean that everybody doesn't have to work hard to get somewhere. When black people talk about privilege, we're saying that our the color of your skin isn't a determ a, isn't a isn't something that is seen as a negative. Mm-hmm. So everybody had to work hard, but some people have had to work harder mm-hmm. because of the color of their skin. That's privilege. Because all things you mean, I there's privilege. I had to work hard to get everything I have. Yes, that's true. But you never had to overcome people's perception of you based off yeah. your race. Mm-hmm. It's it's a whole complex thing because now not the can of worms over. I gotta get out of here. <laughs> we'll talk about because now the because the problem is they want to label all blacks as you know this how y'all are. It's a problem of the people, mm-hmm. and you know anybody that's different, you're not like them. Mm-hmm. Or you don't sound like a black person. Yeah, because all y'all are supposed to be this one way. Yeah. But then when you see, let's take the police for instance, right? Um, not all cops are bad. Mm-hmm. But those one few cops will do something and it reflect on everybody else. And people say, all of a sudden, they know how to separate a mm-hmm. few bad apples compared to the whole. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to us, they can't see the few bad apples compared to it's mm-hmm. that's all how all y'all together. And if one happens to be different, that's an anomaly. Mm-hmm. That's what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Like you said, well, you don't talk like it. You you don't act like you don't, you know, because the perception is. I had someone ask me if I was biracial. <laughs> Are you serious? Dead serious. What you say? <laughs> I'm black. <laughs> no. You better than me. But that's that's one thing I think, and I know black people joke about it. That's one thing black people need to get over to, mm-hmm. which is people who have you know good diction, education, da da da. Not trying to separate that, mm-hmm. and think that by, bought into the narrative that being truly black is your kind of hood. You you know, mm-hmm. so, I mean, people joke. We I joke about it sometimes, but that's but that's not the real sediment. Yeah. You know, and we got to get over that too, buying into that foolishness of, you know, you're not black unless you, you know, so and so, so and so. Just because you talk good, you acting like you white and stuff like that. Like, come mm-hmm. on, y'all. Come mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. That's something internally we got to get over too. Very true. Ourselves, because then you bought into the lie that all of us are supposed to act like a certain. And what does that do? Which, like, what does that do for you as a whole to have those thoughts? I think it buys into the narrative that's received from certain groups, but it also um, shows the insecurity too. You think you're better than us, mm-hmm. which is not true. You know, oh, you different than us, you know, which is not true. It's the crabs in the barrel thing. Right. But we could talk more about this next week. Yeah. I really got to go. You got to go. <laughs> this, this is going to be a, ooh, this is going to be an intense conversation. Oh, boy. <laughs> But well, we got to talk about because we want to talk about the ills on the outside. We got to talk about mm-hmm. the colorism that's on the inside too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the pa- the brown paper the paper bag thing. 
You know, if you light it in the paper bag, it's cool. You darken the paper bag. No, yeah. you buy it in today. That's why you see, you're starting to see better now. That's why, like, you know, like the show Bel Air, you see a, a variety of colors. Mm -hmm. A lot of their main characters, dark skin versus before, the more European you look, the more yeah. dark skin people were more to the background. Yeah. But anyway, Standard we'll talk beauty. about that later. Yep. All right, y'all. We got to go. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> see you.